Welcome to Magic Vacation. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Andy McAlfresh. Okay, so you missed right before we went. We said something really fucking funny. So, <laughs> I don't know how I'm funny. Asking, it's funny to you. Maybe. We'll see. I'm asking Andy to reenact the moment that it happened. Uh, well, here's what happened. Kevin, I, Kevin couldn't hear me. Yeah. And so he was like, hey, it's you. It's got to be you. And then he's like, wait a second. And he pushes a button somewhere under his desk. And he's like, oh, there you are. It was me. We're doing and with we're, a single push of a button. Yes. We're hold on. I was well, able let's, to let's take let's take it back even further. We're not in the same room. We're obviously uh for those watching, you can see, but for those listening, the mm. traditional way to ingest education. Imagine if this is what the other side of your room looked like and we were just faking it. Yes. <laughs> like and you were on the other side of the desk and they're like, What it masterful art direction? <laughs> um, so we're recording via Zoom today. And uh, in doing so, um, I could uh, hear Andy up until I plugged in, jacked in, if you will, to use a fucking technical term from the world mm -hmm. of fucking high tech podcasting, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, I don't want to alienate Thank God you use that preposition. Yeah. Play, yeah. It's that preposition instead of off. Let me tell you something. You proposition me in a dream. You better wake up and apologize, Andy. <laughs> You're just really not going to listen today, are you? Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> In any event. So uh, we're we're about to record, and we couldn't because I couldn't hear Andy all of a sudden. And then I was like, what the fuck? And then I realized I hadn't pressed the button on the soundboard. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly I could hear Andy. At that point, um, was it you that said with a press of a button? <laughs> No, it was it was you. I kept going. I was like, with the press of a button, I'm what was I? I said something like, I'm a modern day sorcerer. I yes, said, bring Andy in like a modern day sorcerer. And I was like, well, I mean, no, because first you get the sorcerer got it wrong in this case. And then I said, that's how it always goes in those sorcerer movies, man. Like with the buckets and the brooms, they always get it wrong at first, and they bust it right. <laughs> no, no. And then I said, well, you look at Gandalf. It's not like he ever got it right as a sorcerer, because well. He has all this power. He's just using a sword and killing. Why doesn't he? I mean, he's got a staff. There you go. There you go. You needed that <laughs> setup line, buddy. <laughs> Couldn't go anywhere without it. And that's when I, kids, rock. Mind you, Andy got the staff a lot quicker. That's when I rocked this amazing rejoinder where I said, Gandalf ain't got no staff. He's got a bunch of hobbits, but they do his bidding. Yeah, that was that was the and that was it. That was the thing we were going for. And Kevin laughed. Wasn't that worth it? He said, wait a minute, we better start the podcast. We can't do anything. We can't be funny Tell without me. recording it. Exactly. I said, why would we ever bother saying anything? It's not going to be recorded for posterity. I said, we're leaving gold behind here, sheer gold. And now that I hear it out loud, <laughs> <laughs> perhaps fool's gold, if you will. What is it a called? A little iron pyrite, if yes. you will. Yeah. Fucking, you can't <laughs> buy any of that iron right, man. It's fucking terrible. Um, all right, so we're already in the show. We can't help mm. but be in the show already. Yes, uh, we are. This is education, folks. And in the fucking the world of education, we generally have structure. Yes. Four corridors, four chambers, the sci-fi, the why, and the by. But this week, we're going off the grid. Yeah, normally, I mean, it's part of the sort of Pat and Mike relationship that Kevin and I have, which is I adore a format. I love scripted elements i can't can't go on without being prepared and yet kevin is chaos he is the tempestuous yin to my, or yang to my no he is the calm i am the calming yang to his tempestuous yin i would argue that um you know somebody who's just like uh the fucking jewish space lasers they are chaotic i that's am, true i'm more like a like a oversized mischievous imp well, either way, chaos comes in many forms, as you, <laughs> as our listeners and now viewers. Does it come in chocolate? Does it come in chocolate and strawberry, or just <laughs> fucking? Plain? I didn't say flavors. I said forms. Oh. You know, like the ten forty e and the w two. Does it come like um, form of a glass of water? Like Shape fun. of something that can't carry a glass of water. <laughs> you kids, you can't get this right. Or it was always like. Form of, she was like, shape of an elephant. And he was like, form of water. 
And then she mm-hmm. sucked him up in her nose, and he was just like, oh, I know we're related, <laughs> but fucking it's it like amazing. Form of a different fluid. <laughs> Sorry, they're brother and sister. She's shooting it out, and she's like out of her trunk, her elephant trunk, and she's like, it's more viscous than usual. <laughs> He's like, no, it's not. <laughs> He's trying, trying to hide that shit. Um, all right, listen. And for all we know, they weren't related. They were just from the same fucking planet. You know what I'm saying? They told us they, they were, were. They told us they were brother and sister because it was this fucking seventies, and they didn't want to scare us. They were like, "Look, it's fucked up enough that we're telling them that there are aliens and they walk amongst us and they're welcomed <laughs> amongst the fucking alphas in this world." But we gotta fuck if we if we say like they can fuck anything they want. They'll go crazy. <laughs> so we got to say that these two are brother and sister. So they, the, the kids realize they'll never fuck because, oh my God, if those two fuck, forget it. We're, we're fucked. If they fuck, Jim, we're fucked. Like they always had little things that they would say. Like they're like, they Joe, oh, Bill, the, the no. Hannah Barbera guys. Yeah, that, no. that sounds a little too intense for a kid's show. Fuck you. It can't always be Huckleberry fucking hound. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's got to be the real world, man. And mm-hmm. Super Friends is a fucking, it's a parable about the abuse <laughs> of authority, <laughs> about those who seek to take away your rights, mm-hmm. your choices. We paint them as fools, clowns, and masks. That's what we do. <laughs> I got, can I share something with you? So this I put is up, not you sharing anything with me? Not at all. Finally, I'm going right. to open up. I put up a fucking okay. picture of me on Instagram, you know, told a little story, cute little story about mm-hmm. uh, some fucking unctuous idiot on Runyon was like, you know, I was wearing two masks. He was like, two masks is overkill. And, you know, I just shot back, Batman wears a mask. And the guy looked at me like, the fuck? Like, what does that have to do with anything? Plus, Batman wears a mask over his eyes. His mouth. He didn't say all that, <laughs> but you could see it on his face. But my point was like, if you're going to send fucking shout your nonsensical opinion at me, I'm going to shout some nonsensical fact back at you. And it is a fact that fucking Batman wears a mask. So that's it. I put up that picture, told that little story. It wasn't like, now listen to me, everybody, wear a mask or wear two masks or anything like that. I'm always fucking candid about like, I do it because I've had a heart attack. I'm high risk, blah, blah, blah. Go read Boy, that unctuous little idiot really stuck with you, didn't he? Go read the fuck. There are more. Go read the comments. Like there are so many people that yeah. are like, "What are you fucking some sort of idiot?" Like you can't masks won't stop you from getting it. Like no wonder we're still in this fucking pandemic a year later because people like some people are just like, "Man, fuck science. Your science is wrong." And Fauci was a liar. Like they. Goes up there. It's so sick how it's fucking politicized, man. Something as simple as like, wear a fucking mask. And we'd be out of this fucking shit. They ain't going through it yeah. in Australia. You know what I'm saying? Periodically it flares up and then they fucking turn around and beat the shit out of it. No, maybe not to Australia. <laughs> New Zealand. New Zealand. They're yeah. cracking a fucking code. Australia. They're... Well, that's where the hobbits are from. That's right, man. To bring it all fucking back and shit. They right. They had a staff. And he's like, we had to fire the staff because they all had fucking COVID. And then they weren't allowed back on to New Zealand the island (laughs) until they got clean because they got a smart prime minister there it's just irritating man like i didn't i didn't ask like i wasn't soliciting opinion nor was i lecturing some guy was like hey man don't let you know just we need another lecture from somebody in hollywood and i'm like where was the lecture the only lecture was the guy going two masks is overkill like i got lectured i i can't stand how fucking some people are andy I really can't. Well, the the science tells us that literally if everyone, everyone wore a mask for three weeks and did not transmit the disease to anyone else, then it would no longer be a problem. Oh, my God. But, you know, you can't change everybody. All you can do is work on yourself. Mm. Make yourself better. And, you know, you and I have always been on the rigorous program. Sounds like a lot of fucking work. Well, you're on a rigorous program of self improvement, as I understand. Sometimes, as are as are many of us. So, point being, well, I'm saying, like, shoot, do for it, but don't don't expect everyone else to do what you want. I, do what you can. But I didn't. I'm expect not saying no, you. I'm no, saying you know fuckers. that's the way that people should. Yeah, you're talking to the fucker who fucking unctuous dude who said something to me. You think he's listening to this show? You're crazy. 
He ain't mm. going to hear your lesson. You know who's hearing the lesson? Me. It's falling on deaf ears because I'm like, I know. Um, <laughs> was he wearing a petticoat? Was it petticoat unction? Yeah, man. He was giving me some of that petticoat unction. And I was like, ooh. Sorry. It's been almost – it was almost three and a half minutes before I made a pun, so I had to uh, – it was a fun pun, man. It took me back to the days of fucking black and white TV and shit. When you could well, that satisfy. was in color. Oh, in the beginning, Petticoat Junction was in black and white. Oh, I know it. Um, and there is Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow, and he's not the most egregious stereotype on the show. What was the spinoff? <laughs> it was spun off of um, From, uh, Green Acres. Green Acres. Oh, so I might be wrong. Maybe Petticoat Junction did bring in, it was start in color. Green Acres didn't. I don't That's think it did. In black and white. Certainly, certainly we know that the Beverly Hillbilly is the mothership of the hillbilly, uh, or, you know, uh, rural shows uh, uh-huh. was started in, in black and white. Um, the audience is like, oh, man, I fucking hate when you guys don't do the format because then you just wind up talking about the stupid ass Beverly Hillbillies and shit. <laughs> well, well, we don't talk about the Beverly Hillbillies enough, ladies and gentlemen. So today... And it's all Beverly, Beverly Hills to Hillbillies yeah. episode. Beverly Hillbillies. Nine. Beverly, Beverly, the Beverly Hillbillies. That's what it was. The bu- 9021, oh, you better believe it. It's Beverly Hillbillies, wall to wall in Edgemication. Mm. Edgema Hillbillies. Hillbilly Macation. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about Miss Jane Hathaway and her bird, lo- bird watching love. Oh my God. Fucking Andy's a modern day Jane Hathaway. Bird bothering <laughs> motherfucker that <laughs> won't leave those fucking poor pigeons alone. Like, hey, hey, buddy, let me see you fly. <laughs> what? <are> you, what? <laughs> you know, I did see a pair of uh, white tailed kites getting it on the other day. Mm-hmm. White tailed kite is a kind of a hawk. And uh, I was up at the um, you saw it Malibu. Ass. It was just like, ah. And looked around, ah, eh, and then gave you a fucking thumbs up with his wings. Like, ah, right? Yeah, I'm gonna leave us with that image. That's what happened. Um, and he pulled an egg out. I was like, ah, <laughs> <Ta-da>! <laughs> it Turned out they weren't fucking just practicing a magic trick. Um, let me ask you this, Andy. Andy, or let me tell the folks this. Andy has taken uh, to bird bothering. He likes to fucking go stare at them and, and, and fucking unnerve them. Imagine you're a bird and you're just like, I have command of the fucking skies and shit like that. But every once in a while, yeah, I got to come back down to earth and get some business done, shit like that. So I'm going to land. But like nothing could ever fucking take away from me the fact that I'm a god of the fucking air and shit. Then you land and all of a sudden you're being <laughs> fucking stared at and judged. <laughs> So intense. Now, now listen. By some I know that I'm, fucking man who's like, you know, maintaining the morality of it is solid because he's not getting up in your fucking grill. But meanwhile, you're a bird. You're like, the fu- I don't want you looking at what I'm doing here. It's secret bird shit. And fucking okay. so the bird bother is just like, <laughs> oh, I've collected. <laughs> and fucking waits for the birds to fuck. And then the bird has to take off and shit like that. Then where's the bird land? On a telephone wire or electric wire. What happens? It gets electrocuted. All because the bird bother couldn't be bothered <laughs> no. to fucking look this shit up online. And he was like, I got to go see it in the wild, man. And fucking because he did, some beautiful bird lost its life. That's well, it's, bird bothering. A sport of, COVID, sport of become, kings. Kings of jerks. Before COVID, <laughs> about 45 million Americans identified as bird watchers. What? And yes, it's true. But during COVID... Made popular, strain, I mean, excellently. Um, one reason that it got very popular, especially in New York, was that, remember the black birder, the guy who was harassed by Karen, who mm-hmm. called the cops on him? Yep, yep. Now there's like a, I think there's a... People, a like, snowy- based off of that story, people were like, all I get out of that story is that bird watching sounds fun. And they all yeah. it up. And th- so, like, there's a snowy owl and a... Uh, a uh, red-tailed hawk in uh, Central Park right now. Mm-hmm. And there are hundreds and hundreds of people showing up for it. It's like more people show up for that than for like press conferences for any famous person. It's incredible. And there's more cameras and because people are really into it. It's, it's barrage, exciting. It's like a barrage yeah. of bird botherers. You know what they call a, a, a group of bird botherers? An Andy of bird botherers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're, it's like... 
Andy, are, doesn't are you, make it. Andy's not content. He's smart. Andy's a very smart individual. He realizes that you give a shit upon it. Yes. He, he, Andy realizes <laughs> that his pastime is creepy and cucky and scary to a bird, especially. So he wants to legitimize it. You mean, with, yeah. By turning it into a thing. Really? Is that it? So you're now psychoanalyzing me. I love how it's Do you like, want to tell him what you want to turn it into? Or are we not supposed to spoil it? You you just smash every passion that I have until I don't care anymore. Smash it. And then you're passion. happy. Smash then you're happy. You're like, why would you think of anything else besides comic books and smoking weed? And I'm like, I only think of one of those things. <laughs> um, are you going to keep a secret what you're going to do with your? your yes, I am. Right. I am. It's the one because thing I don't I'll, want you to take a big crap on it. The one thing I will say, kids, is this is a smart idea. It's a good idea. I thought I was very proud of Andy. For his bird bothering idea. If you're going to bother the birds, this is what he. Kevin his is the bird watcher botherer. You are the bird watcher botherer. I am. Your job is to bother the birds. My job is to bother you. I'm like, hey, hey, what are you looking at that bird for? A bird animal. And how's that job paying? Pays in spiritual dividends. You can't even <laughs> count. <laughs> Just like bird watching. Um, oh, awesome. I, I think it's so awesome that you have a, a hobby and it's so like innocent and fucking cute in a weird way and fitting as well. You kind of, you got, mm -hmm. you got a bird bother look about you. Bird looker. I like that last, uh, bird that looker. last thing you just said, because you're like, I'm not going to look way down on you. I'm just going to look slightly down on you. I'm going <laughs> to modify my position to just <laughs> have my nose at you. I like your thing that you do. It's cute. I haven't really listened to anything you said. And yeah, while the, while the work you do is excellent, I'm going to call it a hobby. And just say how cute I think it is. Oh, that's awesome. <coughs> All right. <coughs> um, Andy uh, <coughs> loves them birds. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll explain why we're not going to have a formatted show this week. I was because... getting to that. I was getting to that. All right. All Andy, right. Andy loves them birds so much. I he... just didn't want you to say anything else. <laughs> he's is really why I changed the subject. That he forgot to write a show this week. No, <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. He was so busy with his fucking nose of some bird's cloaca or whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> at least, at least I got that vocabulary word into your brain. You know? You're just like, <laughs> at least you know what a bird butthole is called. <laughs> That's what like, we do here on Education Kids. You learn shit. Important shit. Like where a bird's, what a bird's proper hole is called. <laughs> um, what was the, uh, what was the fucking, it? the, oh. Oh, he's the frozen. Fucking, thank God. It, no, I'm not frozen. I can hear you. Were you were frozen. I can hear you. I know, um, but on the recording, you were frozen. Now you go. So I get to get my licks in. Oh, well, fuck. Get another eye roll. That's why my eyes are so spry is because I talk to you so much and I roll them. I thought it was because you had a mouthful of millet. Is that what it's called? What's the fucking shit? I'm not telling you because you forgot. <laughs> what is you it were called? like, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> that's my favorite thing. I'm going to make T-shirts. And wait, what's it called again? I'm like, I tell you again. You're like, I'm going to tell my wife about it. This is what I'm going to tell her. It's a week ago. And then you're like, what is that called again? It was a week ago. It's been seven days, so what I guess it it's called? out. What's it called? Let's call it millet. Why don't we? I was we? right. I was right. No, you were not. <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> so then I hear, it's like, hmm, I'm out of ammunition. Hey, can you hand me some ammunition? I'm like, sure. It's called milt. Well, there you go. Here you go, Kevin. It's called milt. <laughs> Fucking mush full of milt. Second big and shit. <laughs> Um, okay, no, I was I was thinking of the I was I was mixing up the bird cloaca and the fish milt, two things that don't happen unless a bird you got your fish milt and my bird cloaca, <laughs> <laughs> two great tastes that go great together. Reese's milt cloaca, <coughs> milt cloaca, but mm. um, all right. Enough about bird holes and fish cum. <clears throat> this week, no proper episode, man, because fucking sometimes we just like to cut loose. Go up. Well, one of us does. Go off the grid. <laughs> yeah, well. Go fucking off-roading and shit like that. I had shit to do. I had shit to do. You know, I write. 
Off things. Rodan, off Gamora, have- Gamora, off Godzilla, off King Kong, off Minya, off King Ghidorah, off – because I said off road, road, off Rodan. Mm-hmm. See what I did there? I fucking escalated it through all the – what they now call the Titans, but we used to call mm-hmm. them monsters. Right, right. Yeah, when I'm not laughing, it doesn't mean I didn't get what you were saying. <laughs> Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Have you been looking for all my old podcasts? The ones I started recording back in 2007? Well, guess what? I found them. They're all hiding in that Kevin Smith club. See all the video you've never seen, including exclusive movies and live shows. You want some swag? That Kevin Smith club is making pins and miniature versions of my old scripts. If you want to be involved in the least exclusive, most inclusive club on the net, join that Kevin Smith club. Now's your chance to club Kevin Smith. Uh, sorry, I'm so feisty today, but... Why are you feisty? Well, you know, I've been working a lot and busy and staying up late and doing all those things. And one of the clients, as you know, sometimes I will write... Uh, there's a few mid-list comedians out there that have me write jokes for them. And there was a big meeting. Now oh, I thought you were going to say one of the clients wanted to kiss and that's not my policy. So... <laughs> <laughs> that we you couldn't make it through a whole sentence. We had a pretty woman kind of situation on our hands, but I was falling right. in love because if, if I'm not out at the plaza hooking my little man pussy, I'm locked in this tiny closet <laughs> that you can see. If you're listening to Education, don't forget, you can always watch it. Now, well, if you're not it. listening to Education, you're like one of the two people that is actually on it. <laughs> Tell them why we're not doing a smart Well, show. I was trying to feed you the pretext, the pretense, the fake, uh, you know, Setup, building you block of this. Yes, of this episode. Fair enough. What is it? Well, that one of my clients has decided the agents got together and they thought you need to lean more into your Oh, that's, upbringing. that's part of the fucking setup for the show. Yes. <laughs> You're just getting this, aren't you? I am. Because I, I was like, what clients has this guy got? And then I was like, I'm gonna, Jesus Christ. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make fun of him for mouth stuff. And then I realized it was all part of the setup after you told me, of course. Yes, yeah, it's that it's that you, leap of once again, logic kids, you made once I explained it to you. You could tell we don't pre game. We just fucking dive in and play the game. We do pre game. You just forget <laughs> that we pre game. <laughs> guess we pre gamed a little bit. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> set her up. Set her up, so, Andy. Set her up. Set her up, you know, Andy. They... Set her up. Set her up like the Rosenbergs. Set her up, Andy. Set her up. <laughs> <laughs> they got set up, right? They didn't really do what they did. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg? I know who the Rosenbergs are. Did they get set up? I don't have a definitive answer for you. Oh, is that right? Because yeah. she was a cause, they were a cause celeb, but also uh, many people think they were guilty. So, but they were certainly excoriated. It was the, uh, what was his name? Roy Cohn. Yeah. who made his career on it as a just a dirty tricks bad guy later to be completely exposed and excoriated in the stage play angels in america yes oh yeah and then in the in and the then movie excoriated HBO movie. by fucking life when he died yeah so, um and the ghost of ethel rosenberg played by meryl street meryl street miss meryl street if you can't think of who might have played someone, just say Meryl Streep. Newcomer Meryl Streep. <laughs> yes. Um, she's going to go. Remember the her. Simpsons perfume ad for Meryl Streep? No. Meryl Streep, versatility. <laughs> that was her, her perfume. Yeah. Um, all right. So wait, tell them, tell them your setup, dude. Fuck. <laughs> Will I finally get to it? Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes, absolutely. So Are the agents had a meeting. They want this one guy who's been doing actually pretty good. We need, we've played some of his stuff on the show and you know, he did a lot of his Midwest stuff, but when he got back to his hometown of Gotham city, he's actually filling the house a little bit. So they've decided they want him to lean into his sort of story and upbringing in his material because they want to develop like a half hour, uh, you know, single camera for Netflix or something like that. So that's been the work this week is getting, um, Kevin's like, we'll see about that. This guy's this guy's lucky, man. A lot of us can't fucking find work. This guy's getting work and shit. Yeah, but it's you know some of the material is not great. Some of the other writers have contributed to 
And I'm not sure I would actually do this on, on the show, but you know, that's just the way it goes. You, you write for somebody and then they do their stuff and then either it goes or it doesn't. And then you have to vamp <laughs> while you're, while your podcasting partner uh, can't seem to find things on the. Uh... <laughs> I'm looking for the. I'm trying to get the document onto my desktop. There we go. Now I can close messages. Get out of there, you scoundrel. And there I see what I'm looking for. I'm going to zoom it up to 100, 200% because I'm a blind. We can hear everything you're thinking. Oh, no. They'll find Except out my the dial stage. tone. <laughs> They'll find out my stagecraft. Um, okay. Uh, so what you're saying then, Andy, if I follow you correctly, is that, um, we have a guest, we have footage or no, something. No. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Okay. We'll start over. Hey, I, I hear we got some stuff from that guy that we sometimes play on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a clip. You mean we got a clip? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can put, well, I mean, we're doing a video version, so it kind of falls apart at that point. I know, but they get to see behind the curtain too. Oh, good point. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. And also people have been asking, they're like, I have the YouTube version, but I want the podcast version because I normally listen to you when I'm on my way to work. And so we don't have the audio up for, I guess, the last one. So we have to remember to do that. That's true. And so for those audio people, the illusion will be complete. Yeah. That we actually it. are playing a tape. They'll see it and they'll, they'll know what goes on. They're going to see behind the curtain, man. This is the Wizard of Oz moment of this fucking show. You clattering collection of collegianists. This is me giving away my magician's secret. Everybody's going to know how it's done. They're going to be like, oh, man, that's it. Now I can do it. <laughs> Ancient magician's secret, huh? <laughs> um, all right. Sounds like, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that we've got uh, a treat for, for y'all. Yeah. We got a clip. From this show's favorite comedian. And we're not, we don't like this guy because he bombs, because he does hard. We like this guy because of his spirit. He keeps trying. He won't be defined by who everyone says he is in life. Yeah. He, he, has he literally a, came from nothing. He came from less than nothing. He yeah. had a horrible, horrible childhood. From darkness and uh, lifted he had, himself. Then up. he had a brush with the law, if you will. Mm hmm. And uh, himself up by his boost bootstraps and his mask straps. And, you know, he's trying to make, <laughs> he's trying to make a change. And that change begins with the, he's taking away the pain that he inflicted, I guess in his old life, he was mm -hmm. very hurtful. And he says, yeah. now he's turned over a new leaf. Mm -hmm. He just wants to make people happy. So he's turned to comedy. Yeah, which, putting smiles on faces instead of scars. Yeah, yeah. He went from being down to being a clown. And that's what mm -hmm. the world needs more of. So you're going to hear him now. Just again, fair warning. You guys not good. <laughs> not good at all. But he's trying. And that's yeah. the important thing, man. Because you, you know what happens from not trying? Nothing. Like, I may not think this guy's that good, but there may be people out there who are like, he's the mm -hmm. next jerky boys. He's Bill Maher, <laughs> for Christ's sakes. He's a modern mm -hmm. day Bill Maher. Mm -hmm. So there you I think go. the material's better than that. Well, we'll see. <clears throat> We're going to find out because we got a clip for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the audio from, uh, from the club. I'm going to press play. And here we go. You'll probably hear the, the, uh, the MC. Mm -hmm. Let us know what's going on. MC Fresh. Here. Yeah, yeah. MC Fresh himself. Uh, uh, MC Fish Face. And uh, we press play. Ladies and gentlemen. We, pre well, we press pause. Did you notice the deep inhalation of breath that that MC took before he started <laughs> MCing? Like it was mm -hmm. like if I knew that MC, I would say you should go see a lung fucking specialist, my friend. Why would he need to? He can. He's got the lung capacity of a champion uh, Olympic swimmer. That's true. He can draw that much breath. And how much breath can you draw in? <clears throat> See? 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 Yeah, but the good thing about having short breaths is I could do it quicker than you. So there you go. Than me? I thought you were talking about the announcer on the... Uh... Him too. <coughs> Two of you is a got... birds of a fucking feather flocking together. I'm pressing play. Listen to how deeply this guy fucking breathes. And play. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Got Him, 
Yeah, did you hear it? Plus, did you hear that breathing right there? It took a big <laughs> fucking swallow of breath. What kind of MC is that? Gets out four words and fucking <laughs> needs to breathe. <laughs> Bunch of yeah. bullshit if I was at that yeah. comedy club. I want my money back, I'd say. Yeah, of all the things that happened in the last 30 seconds, I would say that was the bullshit. <laughs> and we press play. It's Bane. <laughs> that welcome felt rather rushed. <laughs> I was expecting a little talk up of my accomplishments and achievements. I sent in a, uh, an audition tape to TED Talks, and it was about city planning. Something I know a bit about from my adventures on the other side of the law. Although I guess I'm not per se on the opposite side of the law now. Now I'm indifferent to the law. I'm a comedian. It is my job to mock the law, if that's what required, and that in other places respect it, if that is what gets me yields a comedic response. <laughs> <laughs> With that in mind, let's laugh, shall we? Okay, hold on. Let's pause. Yeah. Oh my God, he's off to a fucking rocket start. Don't you love? I know. It it's when very. A, don't you love it when a comic explains comedy? <laughs> yeah. I think that what he's doing, he's kind of starting to kind of reach into the Andy Kaufman of it all, mm. and really kind of to be the meta comedian. Discussing his process, discussing the role of a comedian in the world. You know, it's smart. It's smart stuff. Agreed. <clears throat> and look, as long as this guy ain't jerking off in front of people, he's a good comedian in my book. You know what I'm saying? Even good comedians do that. I don't know if you read the papers. All right, here we go. We press play. <laughs> I've come tonight armed with a fuselage of comedic material. <laughs> You will be bombarded with laughs. Okay, pause. Now, didn't he say, did he say fuselage and not fuselade? <laughs> so obviously, he's, maybe he's playing with us. He's, I don't the think. Foster Brooks of, uh, I don't, I don't of, think of Gotham City. I don't think he's doing malapropism comedy, Andy. <laughs> I think he's just not fully aware of the difference between those two words. But now okay. he is, I bet you. That but was I mean, a question more than a you, statement there. You and I got it. That's the important part. I feel bad. I'm giving him the benefit of every doubt. I feel bad for the people who are in the room who are like, he was a lot. <laughs> did you hear that? I did. That's my last <laughs> point. Are you recording? Hi. <laughs> All right. And we press play. What's in the news, ladies and gentlemen? Shall we? Admire the highlights. <laughs> Vaccine seems to be on everybody's mind, if not in everybody's veins quite yet, because, you see, it's a tiered system. Only the elderly are getting the shot right now. So this joke might not play for those of you who are awaiting the vaccine. If you're worried that you won't get the vaccine, this is perhaps... A wise worry. There's clearly not enough to go around. So, be afraid. Be very afraid. Your government has betrayed you. So I was reading about the side effects of some of the COVID vaccines, because I'm a reader. It's what I do. Get up in the morning, take a shit, read Google News. That's where I read about the side effects of the COVID vaccine. And I have to say, I don't think getting the vaccine is a very good idea anymore. What? Excuse me, why would you <laughs> call out in the middle of my set? <laughs> everybody see that? As a gentleman, no understanding of the basics of stand-up comedy, sir. This is not a dialogue, it's a monologue. <laughs> Fucking imbecile. Open your mouth again with anything but an appreciative laugh and you will find my hand at your throat. 
my empty fist, shoved down your mouth, breaking it at the sides, curbing you, in essence, without putting you on the curb. Such is the power of my fist. Now shut the fuck up so I could do the punchline. <laughs> And the punchline that I paid $40 for is, if you were, don't you remember the setup? I was, <laughs> I was saying that I was reading about the side effects of the COVID vaccines while I was g taking a shit and reading Google News. And I have to say, I don't think getting the vaccine is a very good idea. Do you know why? Do you know why? To a little lame audience. No. Oh, thank you. Glad to see <laughs> one person showed up for the fucking show. <laughs> I know we're meant to be socially distanced, but please, there has to be more than one intelligent being amongst you in the 25% of capacity crowd I'm working tonight. The punchline. In case you didn't remember, I was reading about the side effects of some of the COVID vaccines. I do this when I take a shit and read Google News, and I have to say I don't think getting the vaccine is a very good idea. Just kidding. I may be a mass homicidal maniac that blew up a football stadium and grew up in a hole, but I'm not crazy. Okay, stop. Crazy? <laughs> All right, pause. I Plus, hate it when a comedian repeats their punchline if they don't get the laugh they want when they just repeat it. I think the guy that said they gasped yeah. in the you know after the first time that he turned on, mm. I think that guy was his shill because gasping at what he said really underlines the flip for the punchline. Oh, so you think he helped him out? Yeah, I do. I think that guy might actually know a little bit more about comedy than you're giving him credit or that Bane is giving him credit for. I gotta be honest with you. If you're looking for any fucking sense out of Bane, <laughs> you've been paying attention <laughs> That's to true. those movies. He's, he don't care. That's uh, true. He is. A, he is. A, let's press play. This is the shit. He's on fire, man. He's on fire. He's on fire. Here we go. And play. The Super Bowl is this weekend, isn't it? The Super Bowl. <laughs> Yay. Yes. Get your chips and your dips <laughs> while I prepare to blow up the stadium upon which they play this ball of the foot. But with every Super Bowl comes two things. One, an opportunity to subjugate Gotham yet again. And two, the puppy bowl. I'm going to rock you with a little puppy bowl, you know. One you could bring home and tell your mother. I was excited for the puppy bowl. My God, I took a big inhalation of hell like I was an MC of some sort. Must be catching it. Must be. Must be. What's the, what is the word when one could catch a disease? Contagious? It must be contagious. You couldn't think of the word contagious now. I'm wearing a mask and I'm pumping <laughs> fucking laughing gas into my lungs at all times. Sometimes it's hard to think. You don't know what it's like to be the pain man. There's lots of pain <laughs> man. Ooh. Anyway, back to the jokes. The puppy bowl is something I'm very excited about. <laughs> <sighs> I was all excited for the puppy bowl this year on Super Bowl Sunday until I found out it was a TV show and not a takeout order. <laughs> Looking forward to watching the footballers play while I ate a bowl of puppies. Ugh. Anyway, I I didn't understand that one either. I did not see the humor. I bet you that's a confusion for a lot of people. <laughs> I can't be the only one. 
You don't know how many times I called up. I mean, I, I fucking went to Postmates and entered puppy bowls. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Not a single... Not a, they tell me to support my local eateries, but none of them make puppy bowls. Make something I want, and you'll get my hard-earned dollar. Till then, every man for himself. Anyway, back to the funny. You all remember Macaulay Culkin, correct? He was the child hey. actor who was in Homo... Shut up. <laughs> You've been to interrupt my train of thought. Now I have to start all over again. Don't you understand? Comedy is a series of memorized routines. <laughs> if you break the routine, I cannot move forward. I have to go back to the beginning. The jokes are designed to be interacted with at the punchline. That is when you laugh, and that is when, <laughs> when it's no, I no longer require my concentration to tell the joke. The joke is out. Then you fucking react. Remember Macaulay Culkin? Now it's blown. Everybody knew it. Uh, now they know where I'm going with it. I, I can't surprise them. I'm sure they're going to see the home alone of it all coming. What else are you going to talk about when you talk about Macaulay Culkin? And now I have to do it twice. <laughs> Everyone pretend I did not say Macaulay Culkin. Fuck. Fuck him, yeah, right? Rich man. Speaking of rich men of Hollywood, did you know that six men were arrested for putting fake letters on the Hollywood sign recently? So instead of saying Hollywood, the sign instead read Holly Boob, which doesn't even rhyme. Makes no sense. I have a series of punchlines I could rock you with, multiple choice. It's like that game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, except you can't call anybody for help. You're getting all three. First punchline, arrested. There are dozens of doctors in Beverly Hills whose business it is to put fake boobs on Hollywood and they make a million dollars a year or more. Eat the rich. <laughs> Um, then, then there's this punchline. I wasn't that impressed. The pranksters only pulled it off with a set of double Bs. They're flat-chested. <laughs> what in high school they referred to as a carpenter's dream. Flat as a board, easy to nail. That's how I remember it. Pardon me. Third punchline, third choice. I guess that getting arrested was part of the plan. If they wanted a big bust, they got one. Do you see? Bust can mean multiple things. And in this instance, it's referring to the mammary glands you're all so fond of. Nipples and babies and such. Oh, look at the boobies. You didn't grow up in a dark hell hole like I did. I suckled not at the teat, but at horrible things at the end of corrupt and convicted men. Use your imagination. imagination. <laughs> Speaking of imagination, how about Macaulay Culkin? <laughs> what an imagination this kid has, am I right? Anyway, so... <laughs> Speaking of Macaulay Culkin... <laughs> Do you know Macaulay Culkin has joined the call to have Donald Trump's cameo removed from Home Alone 2? Macaulay Culkin himself, ladies and gentlemen, the boy at the center of the movie, the lost boy. 
So now the only times you'll see Donald Trump, Home Alone, and the number two together will be on a golden toilet at Mar-a-Lago. (laughs) 